into my program and what I did was file, open, change path setup, and then I went to my E drive, which is my flash drive again, and then I picked, pick, pick the piece I want to cut, pick the steel I wanted to cut, this is mild steel, and then I changed my thickness and I changed it to 180 thousandths. I didn't adjust the scale or anything because I knew when I drew it how big I drew it, but if you ever need to adjust it later, say it doesn't say it doesn't fit on the piece of steel that you put on the table, then that's the quick way to adjust it right here is on your scale. So I'm gonna press OK. And then what happens if if Don zooms in, it gives me an estimated time to make the part. It's 19 minutes, 19 minutes. Estimated cost is $15. That's set in another setting to where you you tell the machine how much how much you're charging to, to run parts on this machine. Um, more importantly is the abrasive, is how many how many pounds of abrasive you need. So you know if you have enough on the machine, which uh, your abrasive is stored in this in this container over here on the left. On the left side of the machine is where we store our abrasive, and then actually on the machine is the reservoir to hold all the abrasive. It just has a lid on top and you lift up. And this is where you store your abrasive and turn your parts. Now, I've, op I've opened, up my, opened up my part and now I need to move my head to where I want it to be because I want to start it right down here. So I need to move my head to, my, to where I want it to start because that's going to be my start point is where I move it to. So I'm going to jog left. Dog down and I need to go more, so I'm going to hold left button to go fast. Now my, my hand won't actually come, it won't go all the way up against the edge, so I need to, I need to move my part a little bit, or move my material rather. to get it centered because I know my head won't come it won't come all the way over to the edge. It'll come within a few inches. Just making sure it doesn't move. So I want to I want to drop this head down down to here. So let me let me pull this foam off so you can actually see see what we're looking at. All this foam is is to keep the splash whenever it pierces, keep it from, from splash neck on. That's all that's used for. So I'm going to jog it down. And jog it left. Jog it down some more. Left, you can kind of eyeball it. If it's really close, um, you can really take your time. You can, you can also move it. And uh, you, can, you can move it right here. Oops. Sorry about that. You can move it, you can jog it, which right now the jog, the right click, you can see how much it moves. So I'm at negative one inch, 654 thousandths. If I do a right click, negative one inch, 674 thousandths. So in the settings, each right click has been moved to 20 thousandths. So now I kind of have it where I want it to be in the X and Y axis, but I, knew, I still need to set the height of my cutting head right here. So this has to be a certain height from my material. And we use this tool. This is a tool that always hangs right here. It's from Omax, and it's, it gives you about 60 thousandths distance. If you, if you screw it down and get it close to your part. It's not super critical. I, I usually go down to it until I can't move it. Um, and then I come up a little bit. I come up to where I can move it to pull it out. 
and then just maybe an eighth of a turn farther higher up. And then you're going to turn this handle to lock it. Lock it in position, and this is your Z axis. Moving, moving your eye. And if I want to, I would say I want to check and make sure my part, make sure the whole part stays on the piece of material. So I'm going to click on begin machining, just a left click, and then it's going to give me this OMAX path control right here. Now if I press start, it's going to try and start cutting. So I want to right click on start, and then it gives you all these options. I'm going to dry run at full rapid traverse so that it just moves around really quick and I can see where it's going to go. And let me just, let me just right click, dry run. So where it just was, it's saying, I told it that that's home. So you can see it moving around where, the, where it's going to put these pieces. Now you can't really tell between rapids and cutting moves because they're all at full speed and rapid movement. Okay, and it just stopped on me because it actually went too far. And it's giving me an error, babysit. Okay, so any anytime that this happens, there's a switch on the control board called reset override. Now you want to be very carefully, very careful whenever you're whenever you're turning this, it'll let you keep going that direction. So whenever you're turning this, I'm gonna let me close this real quick. Turn this, and I'm gonna right click on jog left. Just, I'm just really, really slowly moving it. So I'm holding the reset override and I'm right clicking away from the edge of the table. So I got, I got too close to the edge. Sometimes it takes turning it left and right and then holding it the other direction. But I got away from the edge, so I know I'm getting too close to the edge in that far corner. So I'm going to need to move my whole piece over just a little bit, a little bit farther to the left. Let me jog back to where home is, or rather where I'm setting my home. Because I moved my piece, I need to reset where my home is going to be. Okay, so I have it down here in the corner, which is kind of where I put it on my car. Whenever I press begin machining, it's going to say, okay, where it is right now is home. So, press begin machining, right click on start, and dry run it at full speed. So now we can watch it go again and make sure that it's not going to hit anything. And as it's, go as it's moving, you can actually see on the screen, it shows you where it is. These crosshairs, where the crosshairs are moving is where it is right now.
stop. I can stop on my last, on my last lead out. So this is the lead in. This is my last lead out. So that's where it stops. And if you want to, it's it's okay right now. So say I want to go back. Say that say that worked perfectly. I want to go back to that same exact home. I'll press close on this. That was my cutting screen. And then up here on the right, there's a go home. There's two different go homes. I'm going to pick the second one. And then it's going to come up, go to past start home. I'm going to press OK. That's exactly where I want it to go is past start home. So it's going to go right back to that home that I just said whenever I did that quick run on that cut. So now we're ready to actually put the weights back on where it's not going to get hit by the head. And then we can raise our water level up. Water level is controlled by this knob right here on the control board. So this is, I mean, up and down. All the water does is it keeps it quiet. And you usually want to bring it up a little bit farther than your head so that way it's quiet. And another thing I didn't show was I took this off so you could actually see the head. Because normally I'd have this on and we, and, and right now I can't get it on because I have nowhere to put it. I'd have to undo this, bring it back up. I'd have to put this on. And so let, let me just do that real quick. Let me just bring this up. It's foam, so you can obviously squeeze it. Squeeze it to get it on. I stick it up like that so I can still see where my tip is. Or, or rather, I can, I can feel where it is. And so now I've lost my z-axis. I need, I need to reset that. Now, the nice thing is, you can jog it to the right, you can jog it up, and I can jog it to where it's actually back on the piece because it, it's kind of hard to set down in the corner. So I can jog it up here where I have a nice flat spot to use my tool. I'll bring it back down. because this is just for splash control. And right now, I can bring up the water level. And remember how I jogged it up and up and to the, to the right? I can go right back to home with this second home button. So there's two of them. The first one is user home. Don't use that one. It actually pops up and says go to user home. Just press cancel. Click on the second one and pat start home. That takes you right back to the corner where you wanted it to start. <clears throat> we might have to add some water to this tank. There might, there might be some in there. And as you can see right there, whenever it bubbles like that, it's at the top of its stroke. So that's not going to be enough water to cover my peas. And, you, and, and the cut kind of underwater. So the water hose is over here. You can add some water. You can just turn it on. And we, we use this big chunk of metal just to hold it there. And so while I'm waiting for that, I'll actually turn the charge pump on because I'm, I'm ready to cut right now. You don't have to have the piece underwater, but it just makes it a lot quieter and less splash. So over here on the control board, there is the main power, which we turn the we turn the machine off on with. There's an emergency stop switch, and then there's this switch, which just says charge pump. And right now it's off. I'm gonna turn it off, and you'll hear it start. <clears throat> and then the other clue that your charge pump is running is you're gonna see this tube on the right. It's gonna be pumping out water. Okay, so actually we need more sand in the machine. So over here, this is our this is our hopper, and it holds all the sand inside. This is the lid. And then there's a lever right here. And you'll take your whatever, whatever you're using to catch the sand with, stick it under there. You grab some of it just by opening this lever and push it back down. It'll leak a little bit of sand. 
sand on the floor, but it's not a, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to take it over here. As you can see, I'm getting kind of low. And I'm just going to pour it in there kind of slowly. I, I like to look and see if there's any pieces of paper that might have gotten inside the sand. But usually there isn't any paper. Uh, it's important to keep all this sand very dry. You don't, you don't ever want water to get in there. So after you're done pouring, make sure you put the lid back there. And we're actually ready to cut right now. So I know I'm in my home position, uh, bringing the water up a little bit higher. And then we're going to go to begin machining. Let's click. And so it, it's actually ready right now. If I just press start, it'll go. Now let's say I did I forgot to turn my charge pump on. It's actually going to just go, and it's actually not going to do anything. And what you'd have to do, you'd have to stop it, go back home, and then you'd have to say, say it's already off. You'd have to press the reset button right here. On the, on the control board. You have to reset it and then turn your pump on and then try to cut it. So sometimes you just forget to turn the charge pump on. So I'm going to go ahead and press start. You hear the pump kick on. And that was the pierce. That's how long it took it to pierce to that material. And now it's cutting. I'm zoomed in on the screen right now, but if I zoom out, it's showing me exactly where it's cutting right now. It gives me a percentage of completion up here. It gives me a remaining time in minutes, seconds, and hours. So here's my whole piece. Here's where it's cutting. 